The Spanish Announce Table. Tom, it is episode 304, like the horseman, of the Spanish Announce Table. Whew, another week has gone by. We had some fun stuff. We had the one-year anniversary show of AEW. We had a draft on the WWE side of things. Draft, you know, we'll get into it that. It happened. It happened. What happened in Tom's world? All right, so full disclosure for the YouTube viewers, uh, listeners of the podcast won't tell the difference, but the viewers might. Uh, I got Invisalign. So throughout this episode, I'm going to be putting my fingers in my mouth because it irritates me and it's weird and I don't like it, but I'm doing it for the better betterment of my teeth and my jaw. My bottom teeth for those viewers right now, I'm going to show you real quick. Looks like uh, the New York Stock Exchange with all those people trying to buy and sell trades and stocks and shit. As a, it looks like a 1980s picture of the Celtics and Lakers going for a rebound. Like, look at all those shit fucking there. Um, mm. So I'm going to be touching this shit and messing with it. So get used to it for the next two weeks or so. Uh, it sucks. But I did it. Right? So I did it. It's fun. Um, like I said, I was having some jaw issues. I was clicking and popping. They said that this would help. Uh, as I mentioned, also, the bottom part of my teeth are just crowded as could be it's like it's like pre-pandemic uh new year's eve on times square down there Mm. it's just so much shit um so got that going on uh and then you know just hanging out loving life uh not too much other craziness uh to speak of right now uh what about you nothing uh nothing of importance you know just living the same old you know Dad life, ranch life out here, man. Uh, you know, did not get a Visalign, did not get my teeth straightened or unstraightened, as it were. No bar fights, nothing like that. So, did you I ever don't have th- braces I don't have anything growing to report. up? Did you I have did braces not, going? No, 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 never. And but I mean, I think I was. There was a couple times where they were like, maybe, maybe we could, maybe we could, maybe. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's been we'll the story of my life. Yeah, that yeah. has been the story of my life. Where as a kid, they're like, "You want braces?" I was like, "No, I don't want to get beat up more than I'm getting beat up now." No, I do not want to do that. And you so see this face? I always, you want to make this face? Yeah, Look worse. Up, what's going on? Right? Yeah. Jesus, Come on. try to cut me a break somewhere. Uh, so I always postponed it, and the reason I did it now is just because. I, I had the funds available. Uh, I have a good insurance plan that allows me to do it. And we're all fucking wearing masks outside so no one can see my teeth. So, you know, might as well go dormant while they uh, improve. And then, ah, yeah, right? But no, honestly, I'm doing this. Tim, if you want me to be real with you, I'm doing this for our YouTube viewers. You know, I understand we're putting more stock into the YouTube channel. And for that reason, I need to step up my own game. And that starts with these pearly whites with improving your face i agree it starts with improving your face and that's great and for anybody listening right you you may be thinking wait wait a minute youtube if if you hadn't caught on we are on the youtube now go to our spanish announced tube that's youtube.com spanish announced tube if you don't want to remember all that just go to the website spanish announced table.net there's a youtube link right at the top also on the website uh, there's also a button to donate. Now, Tom said he can afford things uh, like his invisible. No, I mean, I really um, can't. <laughs> I can't. The show can't afford anything because right. the show doesn't have any funds available. So if you would like some improvements to, you know, maybe better cameras, lighting, uh, you know, accommodations for guests, right? Maybe we got to send some chicken wings to a possible guest. I don't know. Why would maybe, oh, maybe would that anybody ask is for an that? Inside joke. Would anybody ask for that? But. Send that over, donate. You can go directly to PayPal if you don't want to go to the website. Tableshow at gmail.com is the website, or the email to use, excuse me, uh, to donate to us. So, I guess then let's just get into the wrestling. Yeah, Tom? Well, think? what do you think about chicken wings? I, You know, mm. the, some of the attributes mm. that I would equate to, to chicken wings, it would be flavorful, charisma, has a lot of charisma. I would mm-hmm. say maybe has some attitude, right, depending on mm-hmm. the type of wing that you get. Uh, but really, you know, a good chicken wing has heart, right? Like mm. it comes from the heart. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of good attributes yeah. to chicken wings. I, I really enjoy them. But I don't know if we would get them for guests. But I do like 
the attributes of a chicken wing. Hey, before we get into this draft, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to friend of the show. And if you're a longtime listener, this is a kind of crazy journey uh, that you've been on with us is friend of the show, old roommate of mine, best man in my wedding. Anthony Shark Baketeras went from on this podcast as just a novice fan saying, I don't know, John Cena is the number one guy, so he must be the number one pro wrestler. Legit. We brought him on. We were like, hey, we want to get the perspective of a new to wrestling fan, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what what yep. are your thoughts? Because we are, we're jaded and we're just yeah. crass and we suck. And he definitely had different views. Right. So he went from there to, if you're on the WWE Network, or if you have an account on the WWE Network, I should say, uh, check out Evolve 130. You can check you out know. the debut match from Anthony Shark Gutierrez on the WWE Network. He now joins a short list of men and women that you can find on both UFC Fight Pass and the WWE Network. So on that short list, just off the top of my head, you got Shayna Baszler who fought in Invicta UFC and then obviously WWE. Brock Lesnar is probably the most famous of the Mm -hmm. two uh, app personalities. Mm -hmm. Matt Riddle. Mm -hmm. Sharkbait can be there. I tell you what. And if you looked at the newest signees from the WWE, uh, big Evolve class that came in there, Retro Anthony Green. Uh, You had um, a friend of the show, Kurt Stallion, who did Mm -hmm. five questions with us. Uh, he yep. was also um, a yep. new signee to the WWE Network. So be on the lookout. Maybe Sharkbait gets on there. But his debut match with Evolve, uh, with Evolve, Evolve 130, just hit the network. Check that out. And again, if you're a longtime listener, uh, you can understand how big of a journey that is from novice fan just getting you know some perspective on pro wrestling to now making it on the WWE Network. I think that's really cool. It is super cool, and I'm excited, and I want to go watch this thing. I've yet to like sit down and devote, right, the time to start to finish. So I'm excited to go catch that out. It, it, it is just awesome to me, right? Like, cause here, here he was, right? He was just sitting uh, mm-hmm. with us in the in the old, uh, you know, cumulus radio, right? Uh, uh, the hell, well, the corporation. That's what we mm-hmm. called that place. Um, just hanging out, right? He's just he's just our dude, and now. He's almost, I mean, like, he, right, he's on Evolve, he's on the WWE Network. We're going to see this guy headline in WrestleMania someday, if you ask me. I sure hope so. It'd be great. Uh, also on Evolve 130, you can check out a really fun match. Uh, my favorite independent pro wrestler. Obviously, Eddie Kingston just got signed, so he's kind of off the market as far as an independent pro wrestler. But my favorite independent wrestler, now that he's with AEW, J.D. Drake. Love that. The, the blue-collar badass. He has an awesome match with... Now on the main roster, Dabakato at the time, Babatunde, really fun match there um, for the uh, for the uh, essentially TV championship that they had for Evolve. Again, Evolve has uh, sold and went to the WWE Network, so there unfortunately is no longer Evolve shows. But anyhow, you can still relive some of those great moments on the network. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. This week, I think the biggest story... Uh, So two big stories, right? And we'll get into one a little bit later. Uh, The one-year anniversary show of AEW, one full year, a little bit more actually, of AEW on TNT, which is awesome. Uh, But then the second story, and this is where we're going to start the the episode on, uh, the WWE draft started on Friday night, SmackDown ended on Monday night, Raw. High-level view, Tim, what'd you think? (sighs) I hate how they do these things. I, it sure okay. I hear you. For, first of all, the thing that bothers me is the next night on Raw, like the round two, or you know the second, mm-hmm. they start calling it like like round one uh, over there on Raw again. I'm like, no, no, no. This is like round six. Yeah. Or seven. No, I, I guess they, they had new draft pools, right? I guess yeah, that was I, weird. I, just, I, I understand know. from a viewer perspective why you would say, okay, we can't just have the top 10 picks be Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, you know, all your top, you know, Bailey, Sasha Banks. And then when you get to night two, it's like, well, now are we starting with Chad Gable? Yeah. You know what I mean? So. I understand the two pools because you have to say, like, well, who are these people going to go to on the second night? I get that part. Sure. So I get that, right? But then, like, okay, 
So Raw gets three each. SmackDown gets two each, and that makes sense, right? Three mm-hmm. hour show, two hour show. But then, like, it's, it's all right, first night of the draft, round one, second pick for Raw, and we're going with Los Matadors. Like, no, you're not. What in the fuck are you talking? Like, they're not yeah. doing like you're saying. It's not Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt. It's not like the top 10 dudes. So it's just weird to me. And I just, I, I think maybe they should find a better way to kind of explain it. Cause even in this fake world, Mm-hmm. If, if we're suspending our disbelief and we're people that are there, we're going to be like, why? Why did we draft? And why did the Hurt Business all get drafted? Why did we draft? You know what I mean? It's just weird. Okay. Let's get into that. So I'm <sighs> generally speaking, I'm okay with the idea of saving some more top talent for the second night because you want to know where that top talent goes. It gives you a reason to tune in to the second night because who cares where Andrade goes, which by the way, he didn't even get drafted. But let's get into how fucking dumb all this bullshit was. I I like the idea, first off, before I just shit on it. I do like the idea it's Fox executives and USA Network fighting over the talent. That actually makes sense. It's two different channels. Okay, cool, right? It's not Stephanie McMahon and Eric Bischoff. Who the fuck cares? They're just, you know, characters. This is something I can understand. Like Fox would really want to have Seth Rollins on their program. Well, Bray Wyatt is needed on USA network. So I get that part. That's yep. cool. But now let's get into some bullshit. This makes so many things make absolutely zero fucking sense. Okay. So yes, the hurt business is one pick. That's four people. Why would that not just be your first overall pick? Cause you're getting four people. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Raw should be picking for a three-hour show. Their first pick should be four individuals because they need to fill three hours. Well, and the thing that in the same vein is Raw drafted retribution. So a couple of problems with this. Why would you draft the people that said, we're going to take you down? Yeah. You wouldn't do that. Two, they were already on your show. (laughs) saying they're going to take you down. So, WB, you didn't even have to draft. Did you just want us to, like, hey, remember, retribution's a thing, and you're not going to see him tonight. Like, what in the fuck are you talking about? Why did you do this? Well, I yeah, I don't get the, why would you, hey, uh, there's an organization that actively wants to burn down what it's involved <laughs> yeah. with. Oh, let me put that on my show. It makes no fucking sense. So that's well, we already shit. gave him a contract, so yeah. It's so dumb. So dumb. So dumb. <laughs> and then okay. Okay. So then right, so there's a little bit of continuity so far that we're talking about. Hurt business is an entity. They get it one pick. Retribution, even though it's a dumb fucking pick to do, go with, is one entity. They go there. So then why would Raw only want two of the three fucking members from New Day? Yeah, right. Yeah, why did they not take the whole yeah. Why don't you not take the whole thing? What is the purpose of saying like, "Hey, we just want two well, of the Well, they were in different pools. So whoever divided these pools wanted to fuck with the New Day. No, the well, but the New Day was in one pool cuz they got drafted on the first night. That's what I'm saying. If you if you separated the pools and you say, "Unfortunately, the way this random drawing went is Big E's going to be on the Monday night pool and Xavier Woods and Kofi are going to be on the uh SmackDown, the first night pool. Well, then we already know they're going to get broke up, but now where do they go? Okay. Like luck of the draw. That's how it works. I don't get it still, but like there's no rhyme or reason for why retribution was one act. Why, uh, hurt business was one act, but heavy machinery, they get broke up. Why? Who the fuck knows? New day gets broke up. Why? Who the fuck knows? What are we doing? Really? Another thing that really bothered me is I get, we drafted Bray Wyatt, shit, we kind of got to draft Alexa Bliss. That makes sense, right? But what we like about the draft is we go, ah, okay, all these storylines are played out. We've seen them. They've mixed and matched enough times. We're going to send some guys over here, some ladies over here. We're going to fix oh. this. But instead they went, no, we're taking this whole storyline like three or four times and just moved it to a different show. Oh. Here's another, here's another dumb fuck point from the draft that just made zero sense to me. Okay. So again, let's back up real quick. I mentioned 
Hurt, biz- hurt business is one entity. Retribution is one entity. But for whatever fucking reason, we're breaking up the New Day. We're breaking up heavy machinery. Ha! Huh? Before we go with just everyone's on their own. Nope. Ray and Dominic, who've never been a fucking tag team, is one pick. What in the flying yeah, fuck yeah. are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? It may- What are we doing? Yeah, there's no. Yeah, right. And so that's the kayfabe, right? Mm. And then to your point, peeking behind the curtain, looking at these storylines, yeah, the purpose of the draft is to say, okay, Rey Mysterio versus Seth Rollins, you know, all of the 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 tentacles of this storyline have played out. Now we have um, the, you know, the Do- Dominic's in the main roster. He's feuding with um, Murphy. Murphy now maybe has a, intimate relationship with the daughter, but we've done this for five months. Like we're done. And then to your point, nope. We just want to move it now to Fridays. We're everybody, fucking like, done. We we took everybody like Murphy, the the Mysterios. Yeah. Rollins, just moving it to Friday. All over there. All over there now. Well now I'm just not gonna watch SmackDown. I don't want to see that. Yeah, I didn't want to I was I was exhausted with it on Monday. And now you're just saying now it's on Friday. I don't, yeah. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. And it's then dumb. on top of that, let's let's talk about how the draft happens as well. It it, it doesn't make any sense. Like the NFL draft. Let's let's act as if this is a real sport again. Pro wrestling is in a sport. Don't at me. You know it's true. Um, the NFL draft doesn't have a football game and then their their picks right they don't have the the chiefs play the titans and then after the game the chiefs get a draft pick they don't fucking do that so make this either a standalone event exclusive on the wwe network then you can do your top one two three four five seven eight you know 20 picks then we don't have to do these stupid pools to where we're like well why would bray wyatt be on the second night not the first night those things and then on top of that, it doesn't give away the the picks when you're having the matches. And then you're like, well, I know X person's going to win or lose because they're going to the next show. Like, they need to make this person look strong. So that, that opponent who just got drafted to the other show is going to lose here. Like, we already know it's. It's not interesting television when you gave away the the, the the ending before the match with the stupid picks. It's just, this is... Again, old men with deteriorating brains trying to act as if they know what young people want. And instead, all their demo is is men over 75, but then they're saying it's a PG show. Fuck off. Fuck. I haven't been this like this one. Uh, didn't. Yeah. This one didn't like make me mad like I'm red in the face. This one made me go, man, you guys really want me to go all in on AEW, don't you? They just, yeah, they just seem to not have their finger on the pulse of anything anymore. Of anything, because it's anything. because they've gotten to the point where they're eating the icing on top of the cake, and they're trying to serve too many masters. They're too fat and happy, so they're like, hey, let's just try to serve more masters. So we're going to try to serve the TV master. So that's why we're going to have all these different picks go from like, well, we have to have Bray Wyatt on one show, but we have to have Roman Reigns on the other show. And then you're trying to say, but we got to be cool and hip. So we're going to do this uh, Bray Wyatt and then Alexa Bliss, but we can't break them up because we just started. So let's move it off. Yeah. You're serving way too many masters. You have no direction, and it's just miserable. It's miserable. Yeah, I. That they, they it does worry me that they need some kind of massive shakeup. Which that's what this was supposed to be. Well, but again, I mean, we're like just moving company Seth wise. I, I think. Oh yeah. Like one of those where we heard like there was talks that they might actually sell to somebody like ESPN and become part of the. Yeah, I mean, ESPN Network, and maybe that's what it takes. Maybe it takes Vince retiring, an actual, you know what I mean, somebody who's like, hey, no, your ratings suck. I don't care what you really think about Lars Sullivan. No. Yeah, (laughs) and then Lars Sullivan comes back, and that fucking guy. What are we doing with that? It's just, yeah, just this draft in particular made me actively not want to watch Friday or Monday. 
where it, in past drafts, when it was fresh and hip and we kind of had the distinct brands, when yep. John Cena came over to Raw as the champion, I went, well, wait a minute. What the fuck are we going to do here? Right? Mm-hmm. Like, right. well, it's going to happen. And if you and if you remember, they were just doing trades at the time. It wasn't like necessarily a huge draft. Right. And they waited about, I think it was two weeks until the very last pick was Batista, the Raw champion, finally going over to SmackDown. Like they did. Yeah, because it was like going to be two champs, right? Right, and you're like, well, what happens to SmackDown? So there was some intrigue, there was some interest, but now we're just getting so lazy to where it's just the new day gets drafted. Well, first off, the new day just wins the titles because we got to do that. Right. right? Yeah. Just J- just win the titles. Fuck you, Nakamura. And More Cesaro. titles. Right. So okay, but then on Monday you go well. Then the street profits have to go to SmackDown, and it's again so lazy that they just do a backstage segment where they say, "Will you guys just switch the titles? Just switch the titles." Yeah. Just yeah. They go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wonder. What are we doing? What are we doing? I don't know what we're doing. All right. So let's <laughs> talk about doing. a little bit of some positives, though. I will say this. Again, the reasoning and the logic behind it is dog shit, but I will say I'm excited to see Big E not have the crutch of the New Day. That is that is a yeah. welcome change for me, right? That is a Wow. Okay, they pulled the trigger. I do like that it wasn't Biggie turned heel, and then all of a sudden he was the only draft pick to smack down, and so now we are going to get this evil black man on television. Like it was just like, no, he's just he didn't get picked with the rest of the guys. Again, I don't know why, but he can be his own man. Now they have a farewell match on SmackDown this Friday. Hopefully, nothing stupid happens. Kind of think it will, but. We have that to look forward to, a Big E on his own title run. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about Matt Riddle going to Raw. I think Matt Riddle on Raw fits a little bit more. Again, it's three hours, not two, so maybe he can fill in on those spots where it was just random backstage promo. I feel like USA is a little bit more forgiving or more lean into the pot humor that Matt Riddle obviously wants to do yeah. that he did on NXT with uh, Dunn. So I think that's a good move too. Those are my two big positives. Again, everything else was an F, but I like that. What did you like? What did you let's yeah, let's stop shit talking as I'm just getting red in the face. What did you like from the draft? Anything that moving forward, you're like, okay, let's see what happens here. I mean, just the same things you mentioned. I, the, the fiend being on raw i think will be a better fit um and just it was it was done like they'd run through the litany of people we would give a shit about mm-hmm. over there on smackdown for him to do like he can have a lengthy run here on raw and then it'll be time to kind of switch up something about the character which he'll undoubtedly do so i'm excited for that we're gonna get some more life out of the fiend character matt riddle coming over is fun um i i was interested to see seth rollins on smackdown Until- but now i'm not Right. And now I'm not. Like at all now I'm not. So I- Well, and that was one of the highlights <laughs> for me on the episode of Raw was it felt refreshing, new and intriguing when they did the three-way match between Jeff Hardy, Seth Rollins and AJ Styles. You felt Yep. Okay. This is going to be something. And then yeah, then the rest of the storyline goes to SmackDown and you're like, "So we're just we're just going to do that." Like yeah, we're, we're just, just going to do, do that, that, you know, over there. Uh, another thing I do like is Bianca Belair going to SmackDown. I think SmackDown yeah. was kind of thinned out with uh, challengers to Bailey. So I like that move. Dude, I watched Talking Smack uh, with Sami Zayn co-hosted. Uh, Bianca Belair was on there. First of all, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. Uh, okay. Sami Zayn is the co-host is amazing. He's the most annoying little piss ant the whole show. And it's the best. It's the best. I can't believe people didn't break because he was so hilarious. You got to go back and watch that. And it's post SmackDown of the draft. You know what I mean? And and Uh God, it's the best. She was on there. And yeah, you can tell like she needs a little, you know what I mean? Like she was a little uncomfortable in kind of this sit down. And so he did most of the talking, but God was really good. Talking smack. That's what I I like. Talking smack. 
All right. I will, I'll have, that's a positive. We're Again, we're trying to be positive. Well, the patient. New Day was also on there, right? And so then it was like a free flow. So with that show, I feel like they let them improv a little. And Sami Zayn going up with the New Day, talking shit back and forth was the highlight of the week for me. All right. I did not see that, so I'll have to watch that. Um, yeah, so we're again, we're trying to stay positive. I know I just shit can WWE for the last 10 minutes, but they deserved it because it was really yep. bad. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, Bianca Belair, I think she's going to be the new Naomi, where we've seen Naomi versus Bailey a million times kind of thing, but I think there's some meat yep. on the bone of a Bianca Belair character. So Bianca Belair versus Bailey, I think, will be a little bit more interesting. Uh, hopefully something takes off there. Uh, another thing that I did catch is I believe the Usos got broke up too because I think Jay went to Raw. I don't think both Usos got drafted together. Hmm. Do you remember that? The results here again, real quick. I had them up a second ago. Again, another thing before I get back into the positives that also didn't make sense is to your point, Sami Zayn, who is awesome and I love him and he's still one of my favorites of all time. And currently, he got in the fifth round, like 15 wrestlers went before him. He's the Intercontinental Champion. Who does not want the Intercontinental Championship on their show? That should have been a top three to five pick, but whatever, right? Yeah. Jay Uso went to SmackDown. Were they on? They were on SmackDown already, right? Right. So again, well, so what's up with Jimmy? What is he injured? Well, yeah, because if you remember from the match, he was hobbling down. So maybe that's why they didn't do the Usos because they were only drafting. Uh, competitors who are so healthy. Jimmy must be gone for a while though. Then if they because they've been running with this Jay Uso thing for a while, and now they're drafting him singularly by name. Yeah, well, I th- well because if, if you remember, uh, Jimmy was like hopping down like on one leg because yeah. his knee was so screwed up. So maybe that's why. But I thought maybe yeah. that was interesting where it was. It felt like are we breaking up the Usos because that's going to be weird. Uh, but Naomi well, I just went wonder to if Raw. He's going to be gone for a while. Like I wonder if he's got like an eight nine month time frame. Right, like, right, right. and that could be. Uh, but Naomi went to Raw, so we're splitting up Naomi and the Usos. That's interesting. Why? Because fuck it, right? I guess. Well, right now it doesn't matter because they're just operating out of the same. Florida is the new wrestling capital of the world, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> they're just all down there. All of yep. all the wrestling is there. <laughs> so, all the everything. Who fucking cares? Just bring that's all. That's the only these people. place that'll allow it. <laughs> yeah. Who cares about COVID? Fucking oh, stupid. Geez. Anyhow, right? Oh, Anyhow. Um, so that was the draft. The draft is fucking dumb. It's not interesting. It's stale. Uh, they did it really poorly. There's some glimmers of hope that you kind of hope will pan out to be something fun. AJ Styles on Raw, I think, will be good. Again, three hours to get a longer formed match with some other people, I think, is good. Um, there was no winners. <laughs> I, you know, I was going to ask you who thought won so like, uh, SmackDown uh, or Raw, but I thought both sucked. So. So yeah, it was. Let me just let's see if anything sticks out. Like, uh, it was McIntyre, Oscar, Hurt, Business, Raw, Reigns, and Rollins. So Reigns and Rollins are gonna be on SmackDown again. That could be interesting. Um, you know, those two getting a showdown. Button of both egos, the heels, right. right? Yeah, Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair to SmackDown. AJ Styles, Naomi, Jackson, Baszler staying. I hate when they like they draft the people that are already there. Well, like, it's to keep feels... them. I get that. Because, yeah. again, everyone was available. But yeah. Oh, uh, well, Ricochet stayed on Raw, huh? Jey Uso, Ray Dominic. Yeah. So mm. here's another point I was going to make. And, again, I, I'll, I'll, we're going to get positive here in a second, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when we get to AEW, because that was a good show. Um, but I will say this. Uh, last Survivor Series, it was Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT. But then for the draft, we're just going to say, nope, NXT, you're not welcomed. It's on USA hey, Network, but you're not. What welcome. about this one, Tucker, on Monday Night Raw? What are they going to do? What would you do with Tucker? Tucker, have him. Well, you know what they're gonna do. So mm. what they're gonna do is just have him fucking chase our truth around. He's gonna be a ninja for a second, then he's gonna be with Drew Gulak and do something stupid there, and then he's gonna be the twenty four seven champion. Then he's not. That's what he's gonna do. He's gonna fucking suck. Yeah, what would you do? Because he's not I terrible. I think like he's kind of new and kind of you know what I mean. You kind of some things you got to tell him to tone it down, but others tone it. But I think he could have some decent success moving forward. I would change his look. 
I don't I don't mm-hmm. like the I don't like the the wrestling singlet. He doesn't have a I agree. Uh, a, a, a aesthetically pleasing body to look at because uh, yep. he looks like a loaf of bread with long hair. So I would just get him out of that, get him into some pants. A loaf of uh, bread that you're like holding, suspending like from Right, the, like before, the top as you're bag. twisting it, you know how like you yeah. hold it and you twist it, like the twist well, as it's twisting, that's what his body looks like with hair. Um with hair. Yeah, you know. Because he has the hairstyle of a backup 80s lead singer. Um, he looks like a the backup guitarist for, uh, what was that one band? Uh, oh, shit. What was that? Nah, um, oh, fuck. What was it? Who's the band that yeah, everyone hates? Like, well, who's the band that everyone Nickelback. hates? Nickelback. There it is. That's who I was thinking of. Everyone hates Nickelback. Yeah. Uh, what would I do with them? I'd put them in pants. I'd put them in a uh, cutoff shirt, you know, something that doesn't uh, make them look too awful. And I would just make them an everyman. I would make him go with the heavy machinery, and I would make Otis go with the more, hey, little, you know, like the weird kind of yeah. creepy guy. Not creepy yeah. in, a, in a, like a bad sense, but Tucker would be the more serious version of heavy machinery. Otis would just be the little... Hey, I just ended up here. How'd I end up in the production yeah. truck? That guy. That is a good idea because Tucker could probably appeal to your everyman, right? Like if he was just like, hey, I'm just dig. I work hard. I dig in. You know what I mean? Obviously. I kick ass. Yeah. I drink beer. You steaks and weights. Him. Yeah. I, now, where I was going with that is obviously you can't do something too brutal because of today's standards. But. I would put him in the mold of Tommy Dreamer. He reminds me of a Tommy Dreamer. Put him in the, hey, I'm fighting just because this is what I can do. I don't know anything else. You know, I'm fighting for the Intercontinental Championship or U.S. title, whatever it is. You mix the Tommy Dreamer with a little bit of the Sandman, right? Have him, have him drinking a little. I don't know if they can get away with that now. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what they can get away with, but I would make him an everyday man. Uh, if you if you have Matt Riddle floundering, maybe put them together as a tag team, then break them up and have them go against each other. But I would make uh, Tucker more of your Tommy Dreamer and then Otis more of the slapstick, hey, where's my mm-hmm. belly? I don't know why they broke up Mandy. I thought the Mandy-Otis thing was perfect. Was that's where I, I would have kept going with that. But yep. that's what I would do. Kevin Owens to SmackDown. But guess who went with him? Yeah. Alistair right. Black. Alistair Black. Why? Yeah. We had something fun. We had something fun with him and the yeah. fiend, and now just sorry, can't do it now. Yeah, Sheamus on Raw. Sheamus is fine. I, I like the look of what he has here. He'll yeah, I just felt time. like his character was better for SmackDown. I felt it, it fit their show better. Dabakato, what are they going to do with him? Well, here's another mistake that they made, and I'm sorry, but they did is. Uh, tomorrow night again we're filming or we're recording this on a thursday night uh tomorrow night for whatever fucking reason a match that everyone knows the outcome to roman reigns versus braun Strowman for the universal championship even though braun Strowman got drafted to raw so we know who's gonna win that and again that's why you don't do the draft with the shows anyhow uh, but they already ruined the Braun Strowman to Raw goes against the heavy hitter Keith Lee goes against the heavy hitter Dabakato. Like that could have been the payoff is these monsters not bumping into each other. And then all of a sudden you build towards I've been on a 10 match win streak. Well, I've been on a 12 fight win streak and then they collide. But we did Raw Underground for no fucking reason. And there you go. Where did Raw well, Underground think- get drafted to? I think Raw Underground's done because Riddick Moss and Arturo Huas got drafted to Raw. Um, I don't know if that was on the show or post show, right? I'm reading it. Well, they were the already results. on Raw, so they did that already. Yeah, well, but you know what I mean. Um, oh, but now well, you're like, saying they're on the main roster kind of thing. Well, that's I mean they were drafted, right? They were drafted right. by Raw. Yeah. Um, Titus O'Neil was drafted. What was the last time Titus O'Neil wrestled? Why would anybody draft that guy? Before Alistair Black, by the way. Before the Peyton last Royce, thing, even. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, yeah. The last time I remember Titus O'Neil being on my TV screen is him scratching his head after the Firefly Funhouse match. 
Remember after the Firefly Funhouse match was over, yeah. and he just was like, uh. Yeah, he was just like, what the fuck did I just right. see? Which was that great. That was the last time I remember him, which was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know what this, they're doing. Yeah. Do they draft yeah, again, him to do that? I, I guess. But just bad overall. I would honestly give this a D- minus as I agree. a user experience watching and trying to understand it. it none of it made sense. Again, Ray and Dominic never been a tag team for any source of longevity, mm-hmm. challenging for the tag team championships, and nothing like that. But they get drafted to- together. But then Raw doesn't want to draft Big E, but they want the other two. Well, Makes husbands and wives zero, don't get you know drafted yeah. together. Yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. Naomi didn't get drafted with Jimmy. Yeah, you know what the fuck. Charlotte doesn't get drafted with Andrade. Right. Or Andrade doesn't get drafted that. with Charlotte. They're engaged. Right. Yep. What are we they doing, WWE? They that. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't even like peeking behind the curtain. They acknowledged it. So mm-hmm. anyhow, that was a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> the whole thing sucked. Uh, as far as the actual shows go, like the in-ring stuff, I will say I'm I'm really digging the like you went you alluded to earlier the bray wyatt character with alexa bliss this twisted union when they do it at the same time it's called twisted union and like this weird like alexa bliss is fucking gone she's awesome because yeah she just when she was having the the kevin owens the ko show she just looked i was like who in the fuck wow she's good yeah, she is good because she looked legit crazy, like yeah. out of her mind nuts. And I was like, okay, she's gonna be in movies. Like she's good. She's oh, when good. she was talking about like, yeah, he's here, he's everywhere. I, my brain in. has been washed. Yeah, washed. My brain has I was been. like, holy fuck. <laughs> First of all, whoever yeah. wrote that line is awesome. And two, she pulled it off so great. Yeah, and so now they're you know creating destruction together. So I mm. think that's awesome. Here's where we can dig into some fun stuff. Cause now you got to think like, okay, so let's fast forward a little bit. You know, there's going to be a firefly fun house. Bray Wyatt is not the fiend in the firefly fun house. So does Alexa bliss join them? Mm. How does the other little creatures react to Alexa bliss and their world? Like mm. day in day out kind of thing. Not like how Adam Pierce showed up as a mailman and then left. I'm talking about like really in that world. And then you got to think if she's going to do that kind of stuff, right? Where she may be in the Firefly Funhouse when she switches to whatever we're calling her, female fiend or, you know, the obsessed. I don't know what we're calling her. That's is coming, she gonna wear right? A, yeah. But is yeah, she going to wear a coming. mask? Oh, I hope so. Like, is, like so. are we going to give her a crazy ass mask like Bray Wyatt? And then we're going to sell that to little girls? Like, you can yes. be fucking crazy too. That's cool. That's empowering. I like that. That's awesome. Yes. You too can be a twisted psychopath. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. You want to murder people? Fucking all you let's gotta do, do it. Is buy this mask and listen to this podcast. Right. Uh, exactly. Yes. I like that she is like the fiend's Mrs. Claus. This is going to be awesome. And you can go, like, oh, see. I'm optimistic because of the possibilities, but I'm patient because it's WWE because you could have her like long-term play overtake. And we've talked about this before overtake the fiend. Then the fiend is doing her bidding. She's the all power, right? She came in. She and learned his we ways. Have sympathy for the fiend. Right, and now the the fiend oh. is the one that's like, I have to do it because she said, and I listen to the power, whatever we're going to call her, right? I think she's going to have a different name. I don't think she's just going to be Alexa Bliss and then Alexa Bliss. Like Bray Wyatt, the fiend, it's going to be Alexa Bliss, something else, right? But again, long-term storybooking, if this gets uh, just a tad bit stale, you could have these tentacles coming in to the Firefly Funhouse. Here's how, even how it happens, right? They're doing this. They're doing this. They're taking out Andrade and Charlotte. They take out um, uh, Peyton Royce and her guy, whoever that is, right? They're taking out couples. Then they're zeroing in on a Drew McIntyre, all of that stuff, right? They have all these storylines, you know? But all the while. Peyton Royce is married to Sean Spears, so I don't think they'll be. Well, but on storyline, you know what I mean? She has a bodyguard or whatever because she's a movie star. She could say whatever, you know? Mm 
Um, Dolph Ziggler. But, right, exactly. Peyton Royce, Dolph Ziggler. That checks out 1 million percent. I don't even know if they're on the same show, but let's say they are. Who gives a uh, shit? It's not going to matter in two weeks. Oh, a trade. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, or just say it's The Miz and Peyton Royce, right? Mm. Miz is trying to get Peyton Royce into movies, so that's how they become friends. Boom, right there. They're the A-list couple or whatever. But what I was going to get at is Alexa Bliss goes through all these feuds, helps out The Fiend when it's a one-on-one thing, but then has her own thing, all this stuff, right? But where this little changes happen is she starts remaking the Firefly Funhouse, right? So Mm -hmm. some pictures that were up of Kurt Angle having X's over his eyes, those get taken down. It gets replaced mm. with something else. And then over the course of three months, you're like, this fucking place looks, looks nothing different. like what it was. Some of the puppets could disappear. Right. Or be replaced. Right. It's not the fucking bunny rabbit. It's a goddamn unicorn. You know? Oh, that's great. WWE would love that. That's just new merch. That's new merch. And it's more storytelling. And then you can get to the point where the fiend or Bray Wyatt because he would be in the Firefly Funhouse, would realize, like, oh, shit, I just got got. You know? And he well, looks I love around. Because now, yeah, now we have sympathy for the Fiend. She gets somebody to try to take him out once he starts fighting back. We've turned the Fiend face of all things. And right. And then, you know, he can have a run being the face. And pff, it's great. Oh! You know who should fucking be your guy once this happens? And, again, I'm, I'm having fun storybook in this shit for wrestlemania of next year broad no oh it's they've still got that storyline to to tie up right but no you need it's the demon finn balor finn Mm. gets moved back up he doesn't come back as hey look at my dick i wear a cool coat he comes in with the fucking face paint and i'm demented and that's who takes out bray wyatt i like it yeah i like that and then then you know what you got to do Oh, think of this picture. This is how it should end at WrestleMania. God, I love having fun in my own head. Fucking Raw sucks. Um, you have Bray Wyatt broken down and beaten by the fiend or by by the uh, the demon, and standing on top of him is Alexa Bliss just making out with the uh, with the demon in his whole gear and stuff, and he's just broken down, and she's just oh god, we would feel so bad for him. And it's so the fiend, bad. the guy that fucking drowns people in swamps yeah. and shit. Yeah. Ah, that'd be fun. See, that's why you watch Raw. It's because you got little hope like that. What's going to happen? Alexa Bliss will probably kick him in the dick and say, I was never brainwashed. I was here to take you down. Blue. But for right now, Twisted Union's cool shit. Anyhow, that was my whole point. <laughs> oh, okay, this podcast man. can be fun. All right, then. So, draft done, WWE done. Let's talk about it's been a year since we started to give it a shot, the AEW. We were like, all right, let's see what this is going to be. Fast mm-hmm. forward a year. I'd say we're big We're big fans, right? What do you say? Hey, I got an AEW beanie and a T-shirt for my birthday one year later, right? My birthday was the premiere date. For AEW on Dynamite. I always remember it. My 34th birthday, that's when they debuted on TNT. A year later, I'm buying their merchandise. Fun fact, I don't just buy merchandise because I feel like I have to have it. I buy merchandise if I want it or if I you know, feel like I should have it, that kind of stuff. And so now I have it. So that should tell you how big of a fan I am. And again, longtime listeners will know, uh, I hated the Young Bucks. Thought they were stupid, thought their gimmick was dumb. Dumb. I thought Kenny Omega was a fine wrestler with a shitty character. I thought Cody was cool but still needed something. And again, a year later, the most interesting story to me is Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page. My favorite matches are Cody, uh, TNT Championship matches. And then the Young Bucks, I'm not turning the channel. I'm not turning the channel. Right. And that's I'm the progress. I'm not turning the channel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's been a year uh, they've had some of the best matches I can think of. That dog collar match uh, comes to mind right off the top of my head. Uh, that street fight match with the best friends and Santana and Ortiz. Best friends is my favorite week in, week out act. I love the best friends. They are must-see TV for me. If I hear that they're on, I will make sure I'm tuned in. Uh, so I love it. What do you think? 
Uh, I'm a big fan. I like everywhere, you know, everything they've given us so far outside of a few things where, you know, we that have been forgettable. Nothing's been bad, I feel like, right? So, And that's a I, huge compliment. For one year is. of programming, I feel like nothing has been bad. I would give nothing a C-. minus. Like if I were to grade yeah. every single segment, the, the lowest point for me, and I just felt like it was a attention grab move, was the Mike Tyson stuff. That was it. Like I didn't like that Vitor Belfort and Henry Cejudo – uh, and Rashad Evans and Mike Tyson yeah, were involved. And it involved. wouldn't have been so bad if it wasn't Tyson. Tyson's terrible. Had it been somebody else that wouldn't have made a complete ass of themselves, yeah, it probably would have been like, all right, but just Tyson. Like Everybody should have learned this lesson by now. Not Tyson. Yeah. You don't get Tyson and you don't get Jeff Jarrett. You just don't get either one of those for your project. You just don't do it. That is the lesson of this week. You don't get Tyson, you don't get Jeff Jarrett. Right. That is that is what you do. Uh, yeah, I agree. If it would have been Tyson Fury who did an awesome job in WWE, right, in AEW, okay, I'm in. But, again, it was a miss. I understand what they were doing because it's Mike Tyson. He still has name value. He's, he's not good in wrestling, but I get it, right? But to the bigger point, I've never been thoroughly disappointed with a show. I have not wanted to turn right. away like I have for Raw and SmackDowns in the past. Uh, I've wanted to tune in each week. And let's get right into it. So this week, again, was their one-year anniversary show. Again, they debuted on October 2nd. They did their anniversary show on the 14th, right? Yeah, the 14th. Uh, so let's just get into it. First thing uh, of note, all championships were on the line. Um which I do think is a little bit of a shot at the FTW championship, mm. right? Brian Cage didn't have his fucking title on there. All championships, well, except for this one made up one. Yeah, it's fucking made up. Who cares? Uh, so I thought that was interesting. Um, so anyhow, let's get into it. It started off with the best friends versus FTR. This was really great. Uh, FTR picks up the victory, but what did you think of the match? Uh, the match was fun. I, I, FTR is really good right now, um, and the best friends, as you said, are your favorite. They're really good right now, and these two work together really well. So I like all the storytelling they do in here. Again, I like that uh, FTR cheats to win, uh, mm -hmm. even though they're a formidable opponent, and they're trying to bring you know, their whole thing. is like, I'm bringing a real tag team wrestling back, and we follow the rules. And you do you. Um, right. It's great. I, I love it all. I loved it all, and I actually loved how much they put over best friends in a losing, or as best friends were in a losing effort. FTR did some high, you know, top rope moves that they've never done before, at least in my recent memory. Uh, so that was really interesting to see. Uh, as I said last week, and I still feel the same way. As soon as the one, two, three happened, I was like, "Damn it, they missed." I yeah. still feel like with the. The, the mom van angle that you have, that T-shirt that's selling like crazy, that street fight that's one of the best in promotion history. And I know it's just one year, but still, it's one of the best street fights I've ever seen, to be honest with yeah. you, in pro wrestling. I thought you could still get your FTR and Young Bucks match that we're going to get to, I think, at the next pay-per-view. But you could have pulled the trigger and said, best friends, the hottest act, the most reliable no. act during the quarantine – should be the champs. It'll be the young bucks that take the titles off. Yeah, team. and I know pff, I'm okay with that, but we'll see what happens. I know that that's where they're gonna go. Again, we saw we talked about this last week. I just feel like the best friends have been your tried and true. You need a good segment, you get the best friends. They did it when the young bucks weren't traveling because they were doing the stay at home thing as they should. I'm not trying to say like, Oh, they should be criticized because of it. I'm just saying when everyone else was staying home, best friends showed up to the little show and was killing it with matches against hangman and, uh, Kenny Omega and you know, whatnot and all that kind of stuff. So again, I just, I wish they would have pulled the trigger. Maybe I'm biased cause, uh, best friends are my favorite act. So I just wanted them as champs, but, uh, it was a good match. Uh, post match, we saw this lead right into best friends. What looks like it's going to be best friends versus Miro and Kip Sabian. Uh, the the video game thing, 
explain that to me. What'd you think of that? The Kip Sabian Miro playing video game cage side or not cage side, but ringside. What what yeah. does that mean? Well, then he gets mad at the person who got thrown through the game, right? Like he didn't, right? Am I or am I forgetting yeah, no. the spot wrong? No, I think that's right. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think Chuck went through the thing. Well, and then so now I would think you're in the mode of get Miro over, but the best friends are over, so now who's going to lose, like you said, this impending right. showdown? I The Miro thing fell flat for me this week. I'm getting a little worried. Like, if we don't start doing something, Miro's going to kind of be like, oh, yeah, he, yeah, I forgot he was here. Well, he's going to feel a little bit like Zack Ryder did for the couple weeks that he was on television, right? Where it's going to be like, mm-hmm. oh, it's Miro. Um, post-match, uh, again, led to Miro beating up the best friends, uh, led right into Kip Sabian and Miro taking on Sean Maluta and Lee Johnson. Um, it was a just a, really a squash match for Miro. I think Kip Sabian did a frog splash, and that was it, and it was all Miro. Um the one line, and, and Miro, even when he was Rusev, always does this really great, is he just undercuts the talent by still, but still gets mad at him because he didn't call him the best friends. He said the good friends because he's the best man, so no one else is best anything. Yeah. So I like all that. This, that's what's, that's what's going to go down. He's the best man. They're good friends, right? They're mm-hmm. All this back for I, I mean, the promo work between these two teams should be supreme. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like this could have been – built to versus here we go again because we have 14 tag teams like they showed that even like when they were doing this tag team draw thing that they do later uh you we could have had you know a little bit more of a build i don't know yeah well let's talk uh let's go go a little bit out of chronological order and then we'll jump back into how the show went i I do want to talk about that real quick though is might have been a misstep. Maybe I'm just aggravated from the draft and I want more continuity, which AEW gives to me tenfold. Like they usually kill it with the uh, logical storytelling. However, this is what I didn't get. So we need to determine who the who's going to be FTR's uh, opponents, right? Um, at the next pay per view. Mm-hmm. But we do a random draw of the four teams which would be okay if you didn't have a ranking system and just could say the top four teams the number one yeah Yeah. number one number two number three and number four you're in like that was the only part where i didn't understand well if you have rankings then why would you do a random draw because if you're team three and you didn't make it into this final four well, what the fuck does it matter to be number three? Yeah, then? Here's what you do. You do the top three, and then for the fourth, you take like NBA lottery style, and you go four through 14 are all getting pulled in. We're drawing one out. Yeah, right? And something. you get the wild card. Right. Right. We're going to draw one wild card. Or the yeah. top two and two wild cards. Right. right. So the top something. two are in. You're guaranteed. Everybody else goes into this wild card. Because if you want to pluck somebody out of order for whatever reason, for a storyline purpose, sure, okay. But right. – you also make up the order of the rankings so you could just rank them. Right. And that's where that's where I didn't understand that. Because when they stood there and they were like, we're going to do a random draw for the top four teams. I was like, just pick the top four teams. We know your ranking system. I can go look at your website and see who the top four are. Why would we do this? This is so silly. It sounds uh, like college anyhow, football. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Felt like it. <laughs> um, so anyhow, uh, uh, specific to this segment, it led to Young Bucks super kicking everyone, had a little bit of a face-off with Private Party. The Private Party's young and dumb, so they thought they were cool. They get super kicked, and then they stare down FTR. Like you alluded to earlier, I think that's where we're going is FTR versus uh, Young Bucks, which is what everyone's been saying they want. So we'll get it. And that's good, right? Give people what they want. Don't just Yay. keep shitbagging it. Mm. Um, but that's where we have. Uh, what did you think of the segment, though? Are you digging what the Young Bucks are doing here with the, hey, Tony, don't get nervous. We're not going to super kick you. And then they super kick Butcher in the Blade or whatever. No. Because they're just not, they're just not, I don't know, they're just not convincing. I mean, like, they're, 
they still feel like, as we talked about this, nerds that act cool, right? Like they just, they just want to, they just are trying a little too hard, right? They, yeah. Um, I don't like, I like more of the heel work that they're doing, but again, uh, I don't like the, well, but now we're going to take a shot at WWE and look backwards at the TV because remember how WWE looks weird at televisions? It's like, if you're going to be a heel, you know, Chris Jericho and I think even Bully Ray talked about it, Like, when you're a heel, you don't want me to like anything that you're doing. And they play this 50-50 game as, as heels where it's like they take a shot at WWE. Isn't that cool and neat? But then... <laughs> But we're heels and we, we super kick Tony Schiavone. It's like, well, isn't that bad? It's like, you're doing too much bullshit. I don't care about either one. Well, and there's very few that can pull off that mix, right? Jericho's doing it now because he's Chris goddamn Jericho. 30 Steve years. Austin was one because he was Steve goddamn Austin, right? Kurt like, Angle was doing Kurt it Kurt Angle, same time. right. There's a few who already built, like, and I know Young Bucks have been around and they've got a loyal fan base, but, like, I, I, it's not coming across the same as you know i mean it's not the cool guys that are doing bad things it's you know i mean it's the nerds trying to act cool well and i think the underlying tone with the three acts that we mentioned with kurt angle stone cold and chris jericho when they were heels but everyone was loving what they were doing is we didn't necessarily take what they were doing seriously and in this storyline we're being told we should be taking what the young bucks are doing seriously Right. So when Stone Cold and Kurt Angle go into the ring and they have a hug off with Vince McMahon, we know like that this is silly. But the next segment, they didn't say like, but now we're here for destruction. And you know what I'm saying? Like the tone was consistent when Chris Jericho does the I'm swimming in orange juice with orange Cassidy and my, my coat is orange and da, da, da. he's not then his character a championship match. His character is currently a washed up has been who is being supported by the inner circle. Right. They're propping him up for the, you know, the, the trickle down, if you will. Mm-hmm. That's what his character is. So that's why it works, right? We like you said, we know he's a schmuck who mm-hmm. should get molly whopped left and right and made fun of. But then Hager comes in and you can't do anything about it, right? Right. But, so he that's hides where he can Hager. be. Yeah. Right. That's where he's not the heel heel because we're like, oh, that's fucking douche. But right. But, but with the young bucks. Guys, yeah, but with the Young Bucks, we're supposed to think like, oh, man, they're unraveling at the seams. They're really going to be causing destruction to anyone. It could be a ref. It could be a ring announcer. But then we'll, they'll tell a joke. And that's, again, the tone is just yeah. not right. But I'm glad you mentioned Jericho because uh, let's get back on track here. Uh, the next segment we had was MJF's big announcement. And then mm-hmm. he brought out the uh, brought out the inner circle. Sammy Guevara did finally get his jacket. It was a 5X. That was so great. Did get that was yeah, that was so I loved how he flapped his hands. He just kept mm-hmm. flapping his hands. What the hell is this? Yeah. This. Like, uh, so I, I liked how uh, eventually it came to that MJF wants to join the inner circle. Didn't mention Wardlow. little detail there, I think. I love how he uh, couldn't say it, right? He yeah. couldn't bring himself to say it. And then he does that whole long drawn out thing where he's like, maybe possibly could have sort of thought, thought about it. And then Jericho repeated the uh-huh. exact same thing. And he's like, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, these guys. They're so they're fun. Awesome. Yeah, they they were awesome. Uh, the new wrinkle here is that the inner circle essentially was saying, like, we don't want MJF in here. Ortiz, I yeah. think, grabbed the uh, microphone and was like, hey, we don't want this guy. And Jericho was like, "Hey, easy, easy. Let's let's hear him out." Mm-hmm. And then he challenged him, I guess, to next week a steak dinner. Yeah, loser buys a steak dinner. That's so great. We should do that on our next picks. Yeah, we should. <laughs> we we can do that. We'll see what yeah. let's let let's uh, workshop it. We'll go based off of what they do next week, and then that's what mm-hmm. we should do for our picks. I like that idea. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think happens here? Chris Jericho, MJF, steak dinner next week. Well, what it doesn't matter. I think MJF loses because the inner circle does something right, and 
he's buying Chris Jericho a steak dinner, but they're still playing the thing. He's like, oh, no, in the spirit of competition, right? Like, And they're still kind of schmoozing each other, even though they kind of don't like each other. But he does want to be in the inner circle. But he doesn't want to ask, right? And he doesn't want to give the invitation. Like, I think we're going to get the steak dinner segment. And we're going to get like a little bit long form of this back and forth between them. And I'm looking forward to it. One thing that I thought of, though, is do you think this is where we turn the corner and get serious? Because it keeps on feeling as if the payoff here long term, and that could be next week. Who knows? Because they've been doing this for a while, is MJF versus Chris Jericho. That feels like where we're going. So is the steak dinner where, again, I just keep thinking the inner circle turns on Jericho. MJF takes over the inner circle. Jericho then gets to be babyface. Hey, I've been here 30 years, guy. Uh, I don't know. That's where my heart thinks it's going. Yeah, I don't know. I, I enjoy what I'm seeing. And so, I mean, right now it's not getting stale. I could I could watch another four weeks of them doing this shit back and forth. They're so good at it. They seemingly can't stop. Yeah, and, and one thing I was going to point out when we were talking about um, – AEW in the year that they've had and the future that they have, uh, you know, upcoming is as you know, and as listeners know, I love the fantasy book and you just heard me fantasy book, uh, the, the fiend and, and WWE, but I was doing that out of anger. Like I was like, yeah, and then this should happen. This should happen. And this should happen here. I start to fantasy book a little bit, but then I go like, I don't even want to, like, I almost stop myself because it's, I'm just enjoying what they're doing. I'm along for the ride where a lot of what WWE does. I just go like, man, if you would just switch here to here to here, then you would get to where you're trying to go with AEW. They just keep doing things where it's like, like I would never have thought that I'm looking yeah. forward to next week, a steak dinner segment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like AEW is just killing it right now. I love yeah. what they're doing. It, that's going to be so good. And here's another Thing I'm going to swerve us a little bit because I think this happened earlier in the show, but if you're reading a match list, you, we mm-hmm. might have locked, looked over, but uh, Dr. Britt Baker and the spa oh, segment with yeah. Tony Schiavone was one Tony of the Schiavone best was, things. <laughs> he was naked. <laughs> I love that she didn't know that, and then they freak out. <laughs> so oh, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he just I – lo- and I also love when – when uh, Rebel and, and Britt Baker realize that he's naked, that like Tony Schiavone doesn't lose his cool either. He's like, yeah. I'm he's naked. like, guys, what? Calm what down. Do like, no. It's a massage. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you do here. And then they, they just lost it. And then they do a cut segment really quick, come back. They do 40 year old virgin style where it yep. looked legit that they ripped off his chest hair. They might have been doing that. I mean, it. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that whole segment was really fun. Mm-hmm. Britt Baker putting herself over as the return of Britt Baker, you know, the the second coming to the women's well, division. I love when he was like, I got punched or super kicked in the face. She's like, I got kicked in the face and broke my nose. I still came to work. Taz would have came to work. And he's like, Taz. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. Like, why the fuck does Taz get thrown? <laughs> Yeah, so good what's going on over there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love it. Um, and Britt Baker, just home run after home run. Mm-hmm. Each segment she's on makes it better. She's killing it as the heel, uh, especially the type of heel, where she still keeps calling Rebel Reba. Like, mm-hmm. that's a little small detail that I love. And then, yeah, to the, to your point, realizes Shivani's naked. And then <laughs> there's just like budding comedy with Shivani and, and oh, Britt God. Baker. I just love it so much. They're they're really the good. Freak out the screaming. <laughs> like what I I yeah. can't imagine like uh, that had to be one take because you can only do that right once. I mean that yeah. was so good. So good. All right, let's get back into the matches here. Uh the next matchup that we had was for the TNT championship. It was Cody going back to blonde because apparently blondes have more fun uh taking on orange cassidy uh this was great i like this match a lot went to a time limit draw what did you think um i like the time limit draw thing i i because they don't overuse this i was worried about that they were hitting on it so hard that that we were going to see it a bunch and that was kind of going to be their crutch of not having to do 50 50 booking but they don't and I like it here because, again, we were talking about that. Like, 
and Orange Cassidy on a, on a rising up and and Cody's Cody. So ah, shit, what do you do here? Yeah, this is good. I mean, look, and this will be one where he could beat um, Orange Cassidy next week. Could Cody? And we don't think uh, Orange Cassidy got squashed and hindered by the by the John Cena of AEW. No, he'll come away looking strong on this. I think. Yeah, so they will rematch in two weeks uh, for again for the mm-hmm. TNT Championship. Another cool detail that I liked is up in the rafters, 1990s Sting style. Darby Allen was watching from afar. Mm-hmm. They announced that he will be getting a title shot for the TNT Championship at the next pay per view, Full Gear, uh, in November. So he's this like ominous background presence mm-hmm. to an Orange Cassidy versus Cody match. You mentioned uh, how they don't use the time limit draw too often. I believe, if memory serves me, serves me correct, and again, we don't fact check here, but I think the last time they did a time limit draw was Cody versus Darby Allen. I think that was mm. the first time they did a time limit draw. And so maybe he can give a pointer or two to Orange Cassidy for next week into the match in two weeks. We'll, we'll see, but... I like the 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 pairing of Cody versus Orange Cassidy, and then that like Sting in the rafters, Darby Allen with the skateboard kind of thing hanging out up there. Uh, I also thought this was probably the best match Orange Cassidy's had since Pac, that Revolution mm-hmm. pay per view match. I mean that that sloth style with the hey, I can do a kip up and do dives like the the mixture of I don't give a shit, okay I give a shit kind of thing that he's doing. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. Uh, as I mentioned before, and I'll say it again, love Orange Cassidy, but I don't necessarily want to see him next week. I think when you right. use him sparingly, when he comes out of the trunk of a car to help the best friends, when uh, the inner circle and the elite are you know brawling into the stadiums and then they go into the bathroom and Orange Cassidy's just standing there, that's when Orange Cassidy is used the best. Yeah, the real super cool guy you don't see all the time. Right. right, like he knows to make an yeah. entrance and to make an exit. You know, he's, yeah. he's out. Hey, I'm yeah. out of here. Hey, so maybe two weeks. Yeah, maybe two weeks. I'm I'm going to assume that he'll most likely lose because then we're going to get Cody Darby Allen fun stuff there. And so let's just assume that he he does lose in two weeks. That's then when, hey, just don't show up on dark. Right, be best friends manager. Have best friends beat up on. You know, tag team A, whoever that is, Brian Pillman Jr. and Kip Sabian, if you want. I don't know who it would be. Um, but, you know, Orange Cassidy's his their manager for that. And then just make me miss him, right? Make me miss something and then have him come back in a grand fashion where if MJF is leading the inner circle and he debuts new shirts, it has an orange on it, they look and Orange Cassidy stands there. You know, something like that, like – don't put him on every week. Let me let me miss how cool he is. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. All right. As we move on with uh, the one-year anniversary show for AEW Dynamite, we got the filler match, unfortunately. And again, it's in the same spot right before the main event. The AEW Women's Championship match, Big Swole versus Sheeta. Sheeta picks up the victory. It was interrupted by a picture-in-picture. <laughs> Yeah, I just it's again. There's no storyline here. But you Big could have Soul's done cool, right. But, but you could have done the, the, uh, you know. I, I, I've mentioned this before, and for new listeners, I'll, I'll mention it really quick again. My two biggest criticisms of AEW: not a lot of diversity in the men's roster, just a bunch of white dudes, and then two, the women's division, other than Britt Baker, is just not really taken seriously, and it's always placed right before the main event, which historically is the piss break. This is where you can make the structure of your show different. You could put this match in the segment where um, MJF made his big announcement. You do the MJ big announcement before the main event. Ha ha. And that funny steak dinner. Now let's get serious. Instead you went title match, title match, you know, the structure could be different and you can give the women more yeah. time with a or better Miro match. squash matches. No names. Yeah. Right, exactly. And hey, isn't Miro something to look forward to? Okay, now we go to the main event. But it's just always five-minute women's match. It happens. Nothing's bad. Again, nothing's bad. I haven't seen anything where I'm like, yeesh, 
let's not put those two on the mm-hmm. on TV again. But also, it's nothing I'm going to text you about and say, Tim, did you see this match? You know? Right. And that's where we need to start treating the women a little bit better and a little bit more respectful and stop putting them always right before the main event. Hey, before we get to the payoff, don't forget about the women. Okay, let's get to the main event, you know? So, uh, again, great match. Sheeta, I still think, is the best babyface women Uh, women's competitor to build the division around. So I like that. She's still champ. They did show uh, Nyla Rose in the crowd. uh, So that was something of interest, I think, but again, it happened and that's what it was. All right, let's get it now into the main event. This was for the AW world championship. It was a no disqualification match because earlier in the night we saw Lance Archer and John Moxley just beat the shit out of each other two different times. Uh, but we have John Moxley champion taking on Lance Archer. Well, they continue to beat the shit out of each other during that match as well. Yeah, I, th- this was a hard hitting match. Uh, I, Lance Archer, you know, I think we both were on the same page when he signed with AEW. We kind of were like, OK, yeah, okay. <laughs> right. neat. But he keeps doing fun shit after fun shit after fun. And there's little details every time backstage that he does a promo. And it may not even be him that I just absolutely love. Obviously, I think our favorite backstage segment was when Jake Roberts was cutting a promo and Lance Archer throws that poor bastard through the ceiling. Right. Like that was fucking awesome. And then the first time that Lance Archer jumps John Moxley, my favorite thing was the entire time Jake Roberts is just trying to put his vest on and no one will help him. So he gets yeah. one arm in and he can't get the other arm and he's looking for help. Yeah. And he's like, stop worrying about these two guys fighting behind me. Man. Someone help me with my jacket. I thought that was really funny. Uh, but again, fast forwarding to this match. Lance Archer just, he looks the part. I think of all of these big monsters that they have, the Wardlows, the Jake Hagers, uh, even the Luchasaurus, who I know is a baby face kind of comedy act, but still a big guy. I think the guy that's pulling this off the best is Lance Archer. He's really, yeah. really good. Yeah, he's a monster. And just he also looks like, it, it, like he's a little crazy, right? Like he's the one that looks most like this isn't just a guy who plays – the big guy in the wrestling show. If I saw him at the at the quick trip, you know, what I mean, he'd hold the door open for me. No, Lance Archer looks like if he catches you looking at him, he's going to eat you. Mm-hmm. So you know, yeah, he's. I think he's doing the best. And I also love how just randomly, because again, it's not consistent, but randomly, he's he his thirst for violence is so much that he starts throwing people by the their their belt loop through the damn entrance ramp or in this match he throws yeah. him through his own like shatter glass <laughs> and just walks over him like fuck that guy yeah. I hate him so the like, bitch trying to break him the fight fuck is that guy yeah. <laughs> yeah and so i just yeah his little details to this character is what's making it great for me um also during this match, it was, again, a no disqualification. You had Eddie Kingston join commentary alongside uh, the Lucha Bros, kind of a, similar to where Darby Allen was watching from afar but had a different vibe. Eddie Kingston was watching a little bit closer, and because of no DQ, maybe you thought he cost John Moxley the title here. That didn't end up happening. Uh, Eddie Kingston gets on the mic, you know, Give it up for John Moxley. John Moxley, man. Hey, John Moxley. And so everyone is like, okay, what is he going to do? And then he gets to the point where he's like, everyone, let's raise our hands. And you think, okay, what's going to happen? And then, oh, shit, there it was, spinning back fist. And then it was great. Eddie Kingston puts him in a rear naked choke, yells to the camera, you remember this? I never tapped out. And <laughs> just yelling as John Moxley lose consciousness. I think where we're going is Eddie Kingston, John Moxley, I quit match. That's where I kind of feel like we're going to go because Eddie Kingston keeps saying like, Hey, you didn't really beat me because I didn't quit. And then if John Moxley, you know, says, well, I'll make you quit. That's where I think we're going to go. We haven't had an I quit match to the best of my memory in AEW. Mm. Uh, So could be interesting. Could be fun. I agree. Uh, 
You know, uh, we liked the first go round. Eddie Kingston will do wonders on the mic, and John Moxley does. I think John Moxley does a better vignette promo than he does like "Give me a mic, I'm gonna go stand in the ring and cut you down" mm-hmm. promo. Mm-hmm. So I think if we get some of those, uh, this could be money. Yeah, and John Moxley again keeps hitting that same note that I keep liking of the. Um, you know, lethal weapon, Danny Glover. I'm too old for this shit, but I got to mm. make the call to do it. He's not doing cosplay Stone Cold Steve Austin where I just come in and break shit and leave. Uh, so the, 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 uh, the grizzled old vet who just needs one more ride in the sun. I like what he's doing, even though I think he's 31. It's still, yeah, whatever, but <laughs> right. he's doing it well, whatever it is that he's doing. Um, and then, Think about Eddie Kingston in this short run where he went from opening or answering an open challenge from Cody to then getting his own faction that includes the Lucha Bros, getting a world title shot, and then now it looks like getting another world title shot in what? I don't know what the calendar says here. A month. Uh, Yeah, yeah, two months, months, something like that. Like insane, the skyrocket of Eddie Kingston. And another note that I'll say is he's the best promo guy in a roster filled with good promo guys. You have Cody, you have Jericho, you have uh, MJF and Eddie Kingston, in my opinion, the best. And so incredible. Yeah, I, I, I do like every time Eddie Kingston's on my TV. He's the he's just cool. It just you never know exactly what he's gonna say. It's gonna feel believable. He gives you that element where is this shoot or is this a work because of how believable he he gives his lines. Uh, and his in ring work is good. You know, if he loses ten to fifteen pounds, I think you know gets a little bit in better shape. I think that's when you got to put the belt on him. I I love him. I think Eddie Kingston's the the band. So maybe a little bias there, but I like him a lot. Uh, so that was AEW Dynamite, the one-year anniversary show. We kind of gave you our thoughts as far as what we thought of the promotion. Full Gear is the next pay-per-view that they're leading to in November. Uh, got some fun stuff on the horizon. I'm excited. Uh, I, I liked the year that was, and uh, I can only imagine it's going to get better. Definitely. All right, so before we wrap up, there was also NXT. Don't want to be too disrespectful to NXT. Tim, what, what <laughs> happened on that show? Um, you know, NXT felt (sighs) transitional, if I can say there's some names on there that I'm kind of like, eh, you know, I I don't know much about these names and some of the matches felt like filler. Like we got Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish took on Lorcan and Birch and it's like, okay, you know, Mm -hmm. ah, right. Um, and Strong and Fish won. So they're the new number one contenders, right? Um, eh, I just feel like that. Yeah, for the tag team championships, yeah. Yeah, and see, I but, forgot Brizongo was the tag team champs because yeah, they just don't feel like they're being featured. It, it, like, that all just feels kind of stale, right? Like, it's just kind of going. Um, uh, yeah, like, Jake Atlas took on Ashanti the Adonis. 205 Live. That's cool. You know those names? Yeah. Um, now, Johnny Gargano took on Austin Theory, which was good. And Gargano... Uh, I love the he's demoralizing the whole time. So the the whole thing is he's telling him, you know, you're gonna learn. You're you're young. You're immature. As Gargano is like, you're gonna learn your the wrestling lesson of your life. Like I think at one point he called him predictable in the match. He's like, look, he caught him up and like counter. He's like predictable, and he's holding him <laughs> down. You know what I mean? Like uh, so that was fun. A bunch of shit talking in there. I like that. I like that they're they're giving Austin Theory a lot more spotlights. Right? Like kind of. Well, Right. They're pretty high on Austin Theory. If you remember before that speaking out movement mm-hmm. took him off the main roster, he was sitting right next to Seth Rollins. So I think there was some high uh, high uh, praise for him, and I thought there was some maybe big, uh, big moments planned. But unfortunately, because, hey, you act like a douchebag off – uh, off uh, camera, that's what happens. So now you're yeah. getting lost yeah, in Johnny Gargano. But I think yeah. Austin yeah, Theory. Yeah, just ask Lars Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> Consistency uh, in WWE. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, and Candice LeRae and Shotzi Blackheart, hell of a match for the number one contenders. LeRae wins, of course. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was good. Um, yeah, and then you, there was a yeah. spin the deal or spin the wheel, make a deal. I don't know what that means. 
there's going to be that coming up for Halloween yeah. Havoc. Yeah, Shotzi the match stipulations, I think, is what yeah. is what the deal is, right? Like, yeah. Um, let's see what else. Ha- the fun spot for me in NXT is Killian Dane and Drake Maverick, right? So they're doing the team hell no. Yeah. Um, God, the, the best part is he's got it all lined up, like a dance entrance and everything, and, and – Maverick just like pushes him, as- or you know, Dane just pushes Maverick aside, and he's like, "Come on!" And he just let's get to the ring, and Maverick just oversells everything, right? He was like, "We didn't even get the dancing. We didn't get the." <laughs> he was like, "Come on, man! Like, come on!" <laughs> and the name—I don't know if you caught this one, but he was start- he had merch drafted up, and he was trying. It was the furry and the fury. <laughs> <laughs> the- <laughs> and Killian Dane's just like, "Get so what." What does that mean? Like he's Who like, am I? Because because Drake Maverick's like I'm the Fury, and he's like, so what am I? <laughs> he's like, yeah. And the pictures he had like were cartoon. He was just fat as all hell. He's like, is that supposed to be me? <laughs> like I just, yeah, I like that. And so at the end, uh, he uh, when he left, I forget who, God, who came out and attacked um, Maverick afterwards. Uh, let me pull this up. Um, oh, Ever Rise. Um, Okay. They came out and they started attacking. They're like, "Where's your guy now?" You know what I mean? Like, you got nobody to help you. And that's when Killing Dane comes out and he throws him off and he tells him, in the most abused wife syndrome I could hear, he was like, "Nobody beats you up but me." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I just love how that whole thing's going down. Yeah, that's about the only thing. And then uh, Damian Priest and Dexter Loomis uh, for the North American title. That was fun. Um, Priest won. Um, hey, speaking I, of uh, Dexter, though, side note, unrelated to wrestling, you see they're bringing back Dexter for a limited run on Showtime? Yeah, yeah that should be interesting, right? Um, we'll see. People weren't super satisfied with how that ended, right? Oh, God, it was the worst. It was one of the worst endings in I gave up on the history. show early. Anyway, oh, you didn't see it? I, oh. I started I like watched three episodes and quit. Um, I The Dexter Loomis character I like, I just wonder like how far can you what can you do with it? But mm-hmm. uh, yeah. he seems yeah. to have an idea. Like this is what he's been doing since late in Impact. his career at Impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was telling you this off uh, off air, and I'll bring it up here. You were saying how NXT feels transitional, and I think they are. I think obviously, you know, they were relying on pre pandemic the Tommaso Ciampa's, Johnny Gargano's of the world, and now because of a lack of a crowd, they don't really know where to go. Back in the day, you could get something over with a crowd where uh, Enzo and Big Cass would spell soft, and then everyone started doing it, so it was identified, okay, this team we can do this with, right? Well, well, now you got Damian Priest doing the the bow and arrow. You got uh, the thick boy doing some fun stuff, but there's no there's no response to what they're doing. So I feel the bookers, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Road Dog, whoever it is, don't know if the crowd really likes what they're doing. You know what they should do? Have the the crowd noise be based on the reactions of the actual like crowd, the ones watching on the video, and just have them do like like or dislike buttons, right? And have well, that yeah, like but still automatically the, run the crowd noise, right? But uh, yeah, yes, that would be great because then yeah, everyone's cheering or everyone. Then booing. you don't get a chant. Yeah, you, you don't lose the, the chant. You, you don't get the fight forever. That you know the mm-hmm. the Sami Zayn Nakamura match got it. You don't get the over. crickets when something flops, right? Yeah. And so they're in this transitional period, and I don't know if they know who to pull the trigger on to be. This is our guy. Now they did have uh, what's his ass uh, the. The demon guy, not Finn Balor, but who was the champ right before him that hurt his shoulder? Uh, that has the girl, has the lady. Oh yeah, Carrying Cross. Carrying Cross. They had Carrying Cross, but then unfortunately, yeah, he separates his shoulder. Then they had Finn Balor, and unfortunately, he breaks his jaw. So they are kind of suffering as well. With hey, we had plans for one guy, now two guys. So what the fuck are our episodes going to look like until they're healthy? Well, maybe they should have stuck with this Keith Lee as the double champ thing for a little while longer and wrote that out maybe. I don't, maybe call me crazy instead well, of just throwing him Keith up to Lee do nothing. Yeah, yeah, just having count outs with Braun Strowman, which again, Braun Strowman gets the, te- the world championship match on SmackDown and then also 
a match on Raw with Keith Lee. And I love Braun Strowman. I think he's great. I think he's fun. I think he can be really good. He looks more generic now than anything else that he's done. Like, I actually think he's taking steps backwards, but he's still good. Uh, but, yeah, you've already shot your wad twice because you already did the Keith Lee Braun Strowman match in a no contest or whatever. So it's like, what are we doing with Keith Lee? He beats Randy Orton and just, bah. Oh, yeah, well. That is it. Yep. So why isn't, yeah, to your point, why isn't Keith Lee down in NXT being the double champ? It just, yeah, a lot of misplaced steps here. Uh, but I will give them some benefit of the doubt where they had Karrion Cross ready. They had Finn Balor ready, both guys. So their episodes are going to suffer a little bit. And also, they can't rely on what they have relied on for their entire history. Because if any promotion, obviously maybe AEW would have challenged this, but they didn't have enough crowd to really know. But if any promotion in history, outside of ECW, NXT relies on their crowd. They get the mm-hmm. Bo Dallas, turn your back, we don't want you as a champ. They get the soft over. They get the Bailey hugs thing over. They get the Sasha Banks' ratchet thing. You know, like the that initial crowd, Bray Wyatt character. Yeah, they, they, they get the axe over, and right now there's no crowd, so I don't think they know what to do with their axe. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And that was pretty much it. I mean, you know, a good spot here too. Nothing like the AW feels that we get. I think that's what we keep coming away with. Uh, but nothing as down as the draft either, where we were like, "This is what is the going F. on here." <laughs> yeah. The D minus, um, just because I'm being optimistic, but that F of a draft. They should they should have got a uh, uh, an incomplete because it was so bad. You know, like mm-hmm. when you try. I was stupid in school. I no. would try on test and get an incomplete because they're like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> next year, the, next year the WWE should be punished by losing their own first round draft picks. Yes, they yeah. And straight to the second in, round, just yeah, straight to the just, second round. It's just yeah. Why why was NXT included in Survivor Series but not this draft? Uh, they're also on USA. So how cool would that be if NXT was like, we're taking Seth Rollins? You'd be like, what the fuck? Well, we even hypothesized, you know, when we did our five picks that NXT would be a part of this because then we did five picks for NXT and nothing. 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 And who needs nothing? Who needs some veteran talent more than any one of the four shows? NXT. Because, like I said, Finn's out. They're carrying crosses out. Uh, they already moved Keith Lee up. So it's like they need some star yeah, power. Why isn't it three picks Raw, two picks SmackDown, one pick NXT? Should have been. Should have been. <sighs> you could even make NXT the last in each one, right? So it could be Raw, SmackDown, Raw, SmackDown, Raw, NXT. Yep. Right? Should have. And again, you should have made this a standalone event to where picks make sense because why would you not include just everyone up front? Because – yeah, the third overall pick would not be, uh, you can know, we, who, whoever it was instead of. Can we also Rollins. come right out and say, just moving forward, champions aren't eligible for the draft because we've never like, we know if a champion gets drafted, the other champ is gonna get like it's you've never done it, you haven't done it. Right. We, I we don't believe you're doing it. it. Yeah, just, just stop, stop it. Yeah, champions aren't eligible. Or if they get drafted, they get a title shot where they're going, but they give up their title here. And again, I, I get what they're trying to do for the ratings of Fox and USA for the draft. And so if you don't go with my idea of uh, a standalone event on the network to where all picks make sense, then just have the two nights be all championship matches because you're fighting for A, a championship, and B, to stay on that show. You might right. get drafted to the next show if you lose this match. So that's the part that could be intriguing. But again, I like that. Yeah, so do I. It makes sense. Unlike WWE. Look at my teeth, guys. So cool. I'm, I'm going to look great for you guys on YouTube. I, I guess that's a, I guess we'll leave it right there. It's another <laughs> week of wrestling, and we'll just be back for a 305 next week. <laughs> The Spanish announce table.